Hi, I'm Captain America, here to talk to you about one of the most valuable traits a soldier or student can have, patience. Yes, I am finally back. Look who's back and feeling pride. First of all, I have to profusely apologize for my long, long absence. Um, I'll just break it down for you. A number of factors contributed to me being away for so long. One of them is simply burnout. Honestly, I was trying so hard to make content for you guys. And I do want to make content for you guys. I love my fan. I love making videos. It's just life and everything else kind of gets in the way and takes priority, especially with everything that's happened in the last year or so, which I will completely fill you in on in this uh, video, this podcast, this episode. But yes, uh, one of the major factors for my absence was simply burnout. It's hard to put into words. It's not that I don't like making videos. I love making videos. Just it takes a lot of work. And I just needed a break for a little bit. And then a little bit became a little longer and then a little longer. And eventually it became, what are we on now? 13, maybe 14 months? Uh. Again, I am so sorry for my absence, and I am especially sorry to my channel members who you paid for content, you paid to be members of a channel, which I've seen, I've read some of your comments while I was gone, and no, the channel is not dead, as this video is evident of. I am coming back, I am back, and I am going to keep making videos. I want to complete all my series that I've done so far. I want to bring them to completion, and I want to bring in new ideas. I want to evolve the channel, but I need to keep in mind my basically work health, you know, keep it, you know, at a healthy level. I think before maybe I was pushing myself a little too hard, but I am definitely coming back. I am definitely going to be doing more content. You're going to be able to look forward to regular content. Fingers crossed that I don't backpedal on that. But I am very happy to be back. And I have got so many plans in store for you guys. You have no idea. You, you have no idea the insane stuff that my brain has cooked up over this last year. Honestly, it's been good in some ways as I've been given the opportunity to step back, take a good look at the channel and see where I want it to go in the future. So without further ado, let me tell you about my past year or so. OK, so obviously another factor that kind of uh, contributed to me not being able to make videos is work. For the past year and a half, I want to say, uh, my work has been super, super busy. And right now we've kind of eased off a bit. So now I finally have more time. But that was another contributing factor that led to me basically taking a break from YouTube for a while. It's just my real life work had priority and well, I don't think my boss listens to this anyways, at least I hope he doesn't. Uh, but sometimes, you know, when I had some downtime at work, I would, you know, work on YouTube stuff, maybe a little script writing here or there. Yeah, I hope my boss doesn't listen to this. But yeah, <laughs> uh, basically, you know, work has been my big priority for the past year or so. But now that things have, you know, cooled down a bit, I have more time for YouTube and more time for other stuff. Uh, speaking of other stuff, another thing that has kind of taken away some time, not in a major way, but I have been participating more in the local pride group, pride organization, uh, different queer events and stuff going on in my local community. So that has taken away some time. Uh, I go to meetings every week and stuff. So that was time that I would have previously spent making videos that I am now participating in the local queer community. So that's another thing that's been taking up a little bit of my time, but I feel it's worth it. And I want to continue doing that just because, you know, it's nice to have community. It feels good. 
And that's something that I hope everyone has, whether you are part of the LGBTQ plus community or any other community. I hope you have community. I've said community a lot. <laughs> Another thing, which was literally my last community post, funny how that word keeps coming up, uh, was TFCon Toronto 2023. So last year's Toronto TFCon. Uh, it was very fun, at least from what I remember, because this is now over a year ago. I do remember that I was the guest liaison for Michael Charles Hill, who was one of the writers on Transformers Generation 1, and he was the inventor of DevCon. He was so nice, so lovely, and I've kept in touch with him even after the con. He's even asked me, you know, questions about what he should do because he's been writing some stuff for Transformers and I don't want to get too much into it. Maybe I've already said too much. I don't know. But let me just say I've, you know, offered him some advice here or there. So yeah, he's lovely. Fantastic. He's going to be at TFCon Baltimore, I believe. I could be wrong, but I believe he's going to be at TFCon Baltimore. I don't know if that's public yet, but... <laughs> Uh, I look forward to seeing him again there. So yeah. But yeah, other than that, TFCon Toronto was amazing. As always, super fun, super chill. Uh, love hanging out with everybody there. And yeah, uh, another thing that I've done, basically I started right after TFCon Toronto 2023 and then kind of ran until the end of the year-ish, maybe a little more. Uh, I don't know if you can hear a difference, but I have been doing voice training. Uh, I tried very hard last year to try and feminize my voice as best I can. I feel like I still have some work to do on it. I really need to keep up with my homework because that's a huge part of it. It's just practicing your voice exercises every day and just keeping up with them. And I feel like when I was doing it regularly, my voice was a lot more feminine and I feel like I've slipped a little bit. So I don't know, maybe you guys can tell a difference. Maybe you can't. It's fine. I'm still happy with my voice. This is my voice. I'm not planning on getting vocal surgery anytime. So I'm totally happy with it. It's it is what it is. And yeah, that's about it. Another thing, this is kind of a small thing, but I was planning to go to TF Nation last year. Yes, I know. I am a TFCon staff member. Why would I want to go to TF Nation? Basically, the answer is I have a lot of friends in the UK and not all of them can afford to come over to the US or Canada as much as I wish they could, because it is also very expensive to fly over to England. But unfortunately, I ended up not being able to go to TF Nation because my new passport didn't arrive in time for TF Nation. Uh, I think it literally arrived the day before TFN started. So unless I wanted to pay an insane amount of money for a last minute flight, not to mention trying to figure out how to get a hotel room there last minute. Uh, yeah, it, it just wasn't in the cards. And unfortunately, obviously, this year it wasn't in the cards, but I will get to that in a moment. But basically, uh, yeah, money's a little tighter this year. I'll get to that. Next on the list is Fan Expo. So I went to Fan Expo last year and I also went to the Fan Expo this year. Uh, I'll just combine these two here just to kind of save time. So some of my YouTube friends and I discovered that Fan Expo has a media pass. Basically, if you are a YouTuber, uh, Instagrammer, or some other kind of influencer, you can apply for what is basically a press pass for Fan Expo. Meaning you don't have to pay the, what is it, like $400 for a weekend pass? You could just get in for free, you know, assuming you have uh, a decent subscriber base, which I am so happy that I have 28,000 subscribers. I love you all because you got me into Fade Expo, not once, but twice for free. So thank you all so very much. Uh, <laughs> 
But yeah, I went to Fade Expo last year. Uh, I believe I went on the Saturday and no, I went on Friday and Saturday. I went on the two middle days uh, last year. This year, I went on Thursday and Friday because last year going to Friday and Saturday was completely insane, especially the Saturday. It was literally just shoulder to shoulder. You couldn't move. I was getting super claustrophobic because I tried to go anywhere like the artist alley anywhere and you could not move. You you just could not move. Honestly, I wonder if there was any fire code regulations that were violated because that seemed like way too many people for that space. Honestly, it seems like a safety hazard. But going this year on Thursday and Friday, it was a lot easier, especially the Thursday. The Friday was pretty busy, but it was still manageable. But yeah, I definitely recommend if you're going to Fan Expo, go on the Thursday. I have still yet to go on a Sunday. I just don't know how the crowds will be. Apparently it's much better. But if you are going to go to Fan Expo next year, go Thursday. Unless, of course, there's a guest that you really must go see and they are only there on one of the other days. For me, that was Peter Cullen and Frank Welker. I actually got a photo with them. And that was the only thing that I paid for at Fan Expo. <laughs> uh... Little did I know that I could have gotten that photo for free if I had just waited till TFCon LA 2024, but oh well. Speaking of TFCons, we also had TFCon Orlando 2023. So back at the beginning of the pandemic, we were supposed to have a TFCon Orlando, but unfortunately because of COVID and all that stuff, we had to cancel TFCon Orlando and well, this is more just my guesstimation. I have not confirmed this with the organizer, but basically TFCon was still obligated to use that space in the future. We pretty much bumped the convention back until after lockdown ended and after it was, you know, supposedly safe to gather in public again, although, you know, Obviously, there's still very much hazards and I would still recommend people mask up because COVID is still out there and you can still get sick from it. And there's long COVID, all this stuff. I'm not going to bore you with that. But TFCon Orlando, it was honestly the TFCon that I wish I skipped. I've gone to all of them since I've st I'm staff. And honestly, this is the one that I wish I skipped. The convention itself was fine. Uh, it was basically any other TFCon. Uh, there was just a couple of individuals who, you know, had to comment on me being trans. And well, I don't want to repeat what they said, but it honestly was... I don't want to even say that it was hurtful. It was just ignorance. And it kind of woke me up to just how ignorant some people are. And I'm so glad that in Canada, at least for the most part, people aren't that ignorant. But, you know, it being Florida, it was very Florida. And if they're going to make those comments to anyone, I would rather they make it to me, one of the staff members. And if they got out of line, I would have kicked them out of the convention. Luckily, it was just some just weird offhand comments, just like passerby comments. And if I had known they were saying the same thing to, say, one of the Artist Alley artists, I would have definitely evicted them from the convention. I would rather they say that stuff to me than any of the attendees or the vendors there. I really hope we don't go back to Florida or basically any of those kind of states for a very long time until, you know, they kind of shape up and end their weird transphobia. I, I don't want to dwell on TFCon Orlando. Other than that, it was a great show. We screened one of the movies. I honestly forget which one. People had a fun time. By all accounts, it was a very enjoyable show. It's just, it was Florida, you know? Oh man, I would love, I would love so badly to go to some of the theme parks. I was so looking forward to that uh, back in 2020. 
I even bought like a brand new phone just so I could record, you know, all my adventures. I was going to do videos of the parks every day, all this stuff, but I just couldn't. I cannot spend money in Florida with the way they are right now. I'm sorry. And I'm so sorry to any other trans or queer people down there right now. I, I feel for you. But yes, I need to get off this. Because we have amazing, amazing stuff next. So let's move on. So to transition from that kind of gloomy stuff to some amazing stuff, let's fast forward to New Year's. New Year's Eve, I had a fun time at some friends. We were playing D&D. It's awesome. Great New Year's Eve party. It was amazing. Come New Year's Day, I get a message from one of my friends and co-workers asking me if I want to be roommates with her. And of course, I said, hell yes. And they were roommates. Oh my God, they were roommates. So for the first few months of 2024, we were searching for an apartment. And of course, in the middle of that was TFCon LA 2024. This TFCon was another awesome TFCon, but it was so insane how many people we had. I think it might have had something to do with the fact that we had Peter and Frank there, but I could be wrong. But we definitely had like 10 times the amount of people we usually have at one of those LA shows. It was insane, but it was a fun show. And oh my God, the the YouTubers panel was insane. We literally filled the panel room. The only other time that has happened is when we had Peter Cullen or when my friend Kean Carlisle had his amazing Transformers animated panel, which again, congratulations to Kean. That is the only time that that panel room has been full when it hasn't been Peter or Frank or both. That is awesome. But yes, obviously we had Javi there. So I think everybody being there primarily for Javi was probably a big seller and a big factor as to why the panel was so full. But I was happy to be there. I was happy that people even recognized me, even still watched my stuff, even though I hadn't post for well over six months, probably more. But thank you all. People took photos with us. People had me sign stuff like, oh, my God, that 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 totally blew me away. And people just told me how much, you know, me being out there and trans meant for them. And oh, and there's a fan that gave me like a custom of my character and of Emperor Kumquat. And I'm going to (laughs) cry if I keep talking about this. But yeah. Uh, TFCon LA was so amazing. And honestly, most of it is because of you guys. Honestly, I, I could have started making videos then and there again, but again, just work and everything else it in life. And obviously, again, searching for an apartment with my soon to be roommate, it all took priority. And I apologize. And again, I apologize. <laughs> but yes, you guys made my TFCon LA. That lineup, uh, that impromptu signing. Oh my goodness! Uh, I, I, I have, I, I have to stop. I, I'm gonna cry, and I'm just gonna keep out. Bla- uh, there, I'm doing it. I'm babbling on. <laughs> okay, let's move on. We'll move on to moving in. Yes. After TFCon LA, uh, about a month or so after, we finally found a apartment that we settled on and we have since moved in. So obviously that was a lot of work. If you've ever moved, especially if, you know, you have a massive Transformers collection like I do, uh, it takes a lot to pack everything up, move stuff. It it was intense. And w- we did that in, in such a hurry to get this apartment because we basically signed. I think we signed the lease and then we moved in like a few weeks later. So we only had like a few weeks to pack and we did lots of shopping for the new place because we you know, we want that's that's part of the fun of having your own place. You get to have all your like little own little things like you get to have your own kitchen set. You get to have your own bathroom set, all this stuff that you get to spend lots and lots of money on. And then you're like, oh, my God, I have no money. <laughs> uh, but yes, 
It has been amazing. Um, my roommate is so fantastic. I, I love living with her. I love not being at my mom's place. Uh, not going to go into that. Just going to breeze by, right by that. But yes, she is so fun to hang out with. We watch YouTube all the time. We watch Smosh. We've been watching anime. She's a big gamer. She loves, just loves Final Fantasy. I've been watching her play through Final Fantasy VII Remake. We've also been watching My Hero Academia together. We're both fully caught up to the latest episodes, so we eagerly anticipate the new episode every Saturday when it comes out. She is a firm sub person, whereas I am a very much a dub person. But I I will sit through the sub just because it's the newest. And unfortunately, the dub version is like a couple episodes behind. But I'll go back and watch the, the dub version just because, you know, I like my English dubs. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I love the English dubs. It's usually my preferred way to watch any sort of anime. Unless it's the Takara trilogy, then I'll, you know, stick to the original Japanese because the English dub was terrible. Uh, she also loves Haikyuu. I've only seen like a few episodes of it, but she absolutely adores Haikyuu. If you guys know Haikyuu, it's the volleyball anime. She's super into it. Um, oh, she loves Persona. I don't know if you guys like Persona. I played some of the Persona 5 game, but it just kept crashing on me and I would lose so much progress that I ended up just getting frustrated with it. But yeah, it is so fun. She is a gamer. She loves anime. We've been watching Smosh together. She's gotten me into Smosh. I, I had no idea. I've heard of Smosh, but I hadn't watched any of it, but we're super into it. I am definitely, definitely going to be getting her in on some videos. I have so many ideas for videos for us to do, but I need you guys to comment down below what the first piece of Transformers media she should watch is because she hasn't seen anything Transformers, nothing. So what should she watch first? Should she watch G1? Should she watch the movies? Should she watch Prime? What do you guys think is the best entry point for Transformers? Because again, she hasn't seen any of it. And she's my roommate. She needs to see Transformers. Uh, <laughs> but basically, yeah, she's amazing. You're going to meet her eventually. Just be patient. Then, of course, we had TFCon Toronto this year, 2024. Again, it's TFCon Toronto. It was fun. Uh, I did miss some of my friends that were there this year. I know Comet and Cam came last year. It was super amazing to meet him and hang out with him. Yeah, I I miss some of my YouTube friends who unfortunately couldn't come, but there's always future TF cons. I'm going to be at every single one as long as, you know, I don't get kicked off staff for giving away secrets and stuff. Uh, hopefully I didn't give away anything serious during this video. Yeah, it was just a really good show overall. It was awesome. Uh, let's see. So I already covered Fan Expo this year. Uh, so that brings us to Lily Simpson. So I don't know if you guys know about her. Uh, she is another transgender YouTuber. Basically, her whole shtick is she looks at the trans episodes of TV shows and stuff and basically analyzes it if it was good trans representation or if it wasn't. And she recently did a video on Transformers. Specifically, she talked about uh, Transformers Earth Spark. She covered Nightshade from that series. And more specifically, she talked about how in the UK on BBC, they completely cut out the whole section of Nightshade learning about what it means to be non-binary. They just completely cut it out and it's awful. Like not only is the edit bad, but it is so bad that they felt the need to censor just the existence of a non-binary character. 
like explaining how somebody can be non-binary and their excuse was terrible. They were saying that it wasn't a accurate description of what non-binary is, which is total BS. It was a perfect description of non-binary. Any kid could understand what non-binary is from watching that 22 seconds that they cut out of that episode for no other reason than transphobia. It is insane. I had actually been wanting to do a video talking about that very thing, but Lily did such an amazing job that I kind of don't feel the need to do it. I will if you guys want me to. I totally will. And I've even I've reached out to uh, UK uh, transgender Transformers fans and they've, you know, given me info and advice for it. And I kind of feel like I need to do a video on it. So if you guys want a video on it, I will definitely do that. But do check out Lily's video. She did an amazing job. And on top of that, she even linked one of my videos in her description, as well as Emperor Kumquats. So if you're listening, Lily, thank you so much. I was totally blown away. I watch you all the time. I literally sent the link to your video in my Transformers YouTuber group. And I was about to go for lunch because I was like, OK, I'm going to go grab lunch. I'm going to come back and I'm going to eat my lunch while watching Lily's video, which that is <laughs> that is that's my norm. When whenever Lily does a video, I always save it for my lunch because she is amazing and I love watching her stuff. And so like I didn't even I didn't even check the description. I didn't watch one second of the video. And then Paper Plane messages me and he's like, you do realize that she linked one of your videos in the description, right? And I'm like, what? She did? <laughs> oh. So uh, again, thank you, Lily. And that is my reminder to take my hormones. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, but yeah, thank you. Uh, how appropriate is that? Uh, my reminder for hormones while I'm talking about uh, trans stuff and trans YouTubers. Uh, but yeah, thank you again, Lily. Amazing video. And yeah, that is basically it. Uh, that is me all caught up. Look forward in the very, very near future. And it is probably up by now since you're watching this. But look forward to my spoiler free review of Transformers 1. But yeah, that's going to be it for this episode. Once again, let me know which Transformers series or movie or maybe even comic should my roomie watch as her first, you know, introduction to the Transformers franchise. But yeah, other than that, I want to say thank you so much for your patience. Thank you for being subscribed. Thank you, members. And I again, I profusely apologize to anyone who was a member for this past year or so. And honestly, you didn't get your money's worth. I, I can admit that. But I am back. I am going to be doing videos on the regular. I am motivated. I am recharged. Let's do this. That's it for this video. I'm going to hop in and do my Transformers 1 review right now. So thank you for watching. And and I forget how I end these videos. Okay, bye. And you wonder why you waited so long for something so disappointing. How many more of these? <laughs>